Over the last century or more, trees have been removed from stream and river banks for various reasons, and the river and stream channels have become straight and shallow. They've become a place where fish just don't survive that well. We want to restore the stream because right now there's a federally listed species in here, the steelhead. Uh, we want to create more baby steelhead. This is a, a project where we're trying to monitor the effects of stream restoration, not only on the stream, but on the fish as well. We're going to create more habitat for the young steelhead to survive over the winter. We have walked the entire stream, counted all the pieces of wood, we counted all the pools, um, we've looked at different sources of inputs to the stream. So by adding large wood to the stream, creating pool habitat, and moving substrate around using uh, these inflection barriers that you see up here, we're going to create that kind of habitat and grow more fish. Before we did this project, there was zero uh, steelhead reds documented, and then the first year there was 10, and then I did a count yesterday, which is our second season of spawning for summer steelhead, and there was eight reds, and a handful of them are right in this area. But we forecasted this was gonna be the most probable place that steely would spawn, and it happened, so we're really happy that's a big red for this particular size creek. Following a catastrophic wildfire that hit the upper regions of the Toucanon River, the Salmon Recovery Board was very concerned that that event would undo much of our hard work towards habitat restoration that we had accomplished over the years. But we took those burned standing trees and cut them down and put them right in the channel to create wonderful spawning and rearing habitat. These downed trees slowed the water, made it bounce left and right, scoured holes, sorted gravel and did all those things that make great places for salmon to spawn and rear. So we took a bad event and turned it into a great opportunity to jumpstart the healing process in the Upper Toucanon. So I really need to extend a thanks to Governor Locke uh, back in 1998 when he and the legislature embraced uh, what we've affectionately come to call the Washington Way where we have collaborators, those are the conservation districts, the Indian tribes, the state agencies, the federal government, local governments, landowners, all coming together for over a decade now in, in our region to work collaboratively on solutions to salmon recovery. Much like the native Indians who enjoyed these salmon returns and actually depended upon these returns for their livelihood and subsistence, we today enjoy these fish for some of the very same reasons. And I think it's important that for both tribal purposes and for the economic drivers that these fish bring to the region that we have a uh, responsibility to restore these salmon runs. The Endangered Species Act of 1973 was really a call to act. The jobs, the investments in our watershed, and the salmon recovery in terms of economic importance are all three positive outcomes of the listing of these fish. So for every dollar invested today, the return on that investment goes generations, if not beyond generations, out into the future. Therefore, by restoring these habitat conditions and improving salmon recovery, we're really instilling vitality in our communities and providing sustainable populations for future generations.